Hello friends, in the previous lesson, we discussed about the abiotic factors, the abiotic stresses which affect the organisms. Now in this lesson, we will be discussing about the organisms' responses to the, uh, you know, changes in those abiotic stresses, right? So, let's first of all discuss that why any organism needs to, you know, respond to those factors and how those factors affect the organism so see there is something called homeostasis which the organism has to maintain so the homeostasis is any self-regulating process by which biological systems they tend they tend to maintain stability while adjusting to conditions that are optimal for the survival okay so homeostasis is you know maintenance of basal metabolic rate maintenance of normal uh, blood pressure okay maintenance of normal body temperature maintenance of normal uh, glucose level right so homeostasis is any self regulating process which you know it it maintains the stability of the system right so uh, my body is a biological system and i need to maintain the stability of the system and what will do that i mean uh, what should I do such that the stability is maintained? So for that, I have to maintain the level of each and everything in the body, the level of each and every ion in the body, the temperature level of the body, okay? The blood pressure, different, different things are to be maintained. So these all things, they come under homeostasis, okay? The maintenance of these all things is homeostasis. And homeostasis is what that is affected by these abiotic stresses okay see if the homeostasis is maintained right if, if i am able to maintain the body temperature then i'll survive survive and if i'm not able to do that then i'll die right if i'm not able to control the blood pressure then blood pressure will rise to extremely high levels and then i'll die okay so if the homeostasis is not controlled homeostasis is not maintained then the organism dies otherwise the life continues okay the the stability attained is actually a dynamic equilibrium in which continuous change occurs yet relatively uniform conditions prevail okay the blood glucose level it increases when you eat but it comes to normal range after sometimes only okay so the things change different different parameters change but they are brought to normal in short time only okay and if they persist for longer times like if the blood blood glucose level it remains high for longer long time then what will happen you will face hyperglycemia okay and there will be many many different problems so what are the different methods by which the organisms maintain homeostasis when some abiotic stresses are applied so the very first thing is regulate <clears throat> okay so let's take the example of the body temperature so we human beings what we can do we are warm-blooded animals right so whether we live in shimla we live in uh, delhi or we live in kerala or in uh, Gangtok, our body temperature, our core body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius only. So, why, I mean, how do we do this? In Shimla, the temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. In Delhi, it is now, I think, 20 degrees Celsius. In Kerala, it may be uh, 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. And somewhere it may be um, some other temperature. But everywhere, the temperature of this system, this or organism, the human being is same. Because... The, organ the human beings, they form a closed system. Okay, they are a closed system. So, our body temperature, though it is affected to some extent by the external stresses, but we make some changes in the body, okay, and we maintain the temperature of body. So, the organisms who can maintain, okay, the temperature or the osmotic, or the osmolarity of their body on their own by some internal processes some physiological or some behavioral means they are called as regulators okay they regulate their body okay so they are regulators so all the birds and mammals the warm-blooded animals they are all regulators and a very few vertebrates and invertebrates species and also it is said that the success of mammals on this planet is 
mainly because of their capacity to regulate the capacity to maintain a constant body temperature so you can find mammals in the polar um, polar regions also you can find mammals in very hot regions or in very hot deserts also right so what are the mechanisms by which we maintain temperature so sweating when there are hot conditions in summer we sweat a lot therefore the evaporative cool evaporative cooling it causes the maintenance of temperature then vasoconstriction when the temperatures external temperature is too low our cutaneous vessels they constrict therefore the heat dissipation is reduced and the opposite happens in summers uh, and when we feel too cold we start to exercise we rub our hands okay we walk we jump so the heat is generated and our body temperature is maintained we shiver okay shivering is also involuntary contraction only so we shiver we generate energy okay so but 99 percent of the organisms they cannot maintain their body temperature so they cannot regulate so what do they do they just conform okay whatever the conditions are they become that if you keep them in 100 degrees celsius their body temperature will become 100 if you keep them in zero their body temperature will become zero okay so 99 percent of animals and nearly all plants cannot maintain a constant body temperature okay so and in aquatic animals the uh, osmotic concentration of the body fluid change with that of ambient water osmotic concentration now let me explain this that why this happens that why most of the organisms they are not able to do this so NTR, ncrt book has cited a very good example that uh, during summers all human beings all of us are not able to afford ac right it is costly but we all don't die right we live so how how do we do that we in summers uh, we take bath okay we use the uh, sweating okay we wear light clothes and different different things okay so these organisms and they are very poor they don't have that much energy to you know uh, do the thermoregulation because thermoregulation is one of the most energy expensive processes so these organisms they cannot uh, spend that much energy on um, thermoregulation okay therefore they don't thermoregulate they just conform okay and are talking about the osmotic osmoregulation of the aquatic animals so see the aquatic animals if the salt concentration of the body of the aquatic animal is too uh, molar it is not that much but let's take the example two molar and the salt concentration of the external environment is one molar then what will happen osmosis will be there from external environment to the organism the self as well therefore to stop the osmosis the you know osmolarity has to be maintained therefore most of them conform okay now there is some other uh, another concept that the small animals they are very much you know uh, they cannot maintain a constant body temperature okay and also they are not found in very uh, cold climates it is generally said that in cold climates uh, the small organisms are not found so what happens see if there is any um, do you know the black body radiation okay so in black body radiation what i can remember um, that it is you know proportional to the surface area and also to uh, t to the power 4 temperature okay so let's leave the temperature we need the surface area only so please check this okay that uh, what is the radius uh, the you know relation of radius and the black body radiation so whatsoever we just know that the radiation the heat dissipation is a surface phenomenon okay the heat is dis dissipated from surface therefore the larger is the surface area of the organism the more will be the heat dissipation and moreover the organisms who are small they have very little volume but the surface area is too large okay you, you can take 10 balls of um, 10 balls whose volume is one liter each and a ball a big ball whose volume is 10 liters the surface area of the 10 liter ball and the surface area the total surface area of one one liter balls will be more than that bigger ball therefore the small organisms their volume to surface area okay the surface to volume ratio is very high 
surface area to volume ratio is high therefore heat dissipation is very high therefore in cold climates the small animals they are not found got it so this was the most important concept that very small animals are rarely found in polar regions because heat loss or heat gain is a function of surface area and small animals have a larger surface area relative to their volume okay so that was that now if the you know the external stress is temporary only then what organisms can do they can skip they can run away like in uh, summer seasons if the temperature of dairy tally increases too much then we can run away or uh, nowadays the pollution is too much so i went to my hometown for two days okay when the conditions became normal i came back so same the same thing the uh, different uh, uh, sorry the you know all the um, other organisms also do they also run away and come back so that is called migration so the organisms can mig migrate they can escape in time okay so this is the example of that and the organisms they can all they can suspend also okay so there is something called dormancy which is a period in the organism's life when growth development and physical activity are temporarily stopped okay there is no growth there is no development there is no physical activity the organism is just dormant okay the organism is not doing anything is that is just you know equal to dead only the basic biological activities are being done like respiration and that also at very minimal level so that the you know energy is conserved okay so what are the examples of these not dormant stages they are bacterial spores the fungus spores and the plant spores in lower plants also the seed seed is also a dormant embryo only okay and these spores and seeds when they get um, favorable conditions they germinate and this is to metabolize, uh, minimize metabolic activity and thus the energy consumption okay so what are the examples hibernation during winter the organisms escape in time okay the organism remains at the same place therefore it is not the escape in space like migration it is escape in time so the example is polar bear the estivation if organism escapes in summers then it is estivation the examples are insect fish or amphibians and a period of suspended development in an insect or other in other invertebrates or mammal embryo especially during unfavorable environmental conditions is called as diapause okay see pause diapause it happens generally in zooplankton also okay so that's it from this lesson thank you